everyone. Are you ready to kill some cookies and start using tokens? Awesome. So let's do that. So before starting, put your hands up if you already know about what a JSON Web Token is. OK, so it's a pretty good moment to start learning about it. So what is a JSON Web Token? Let's start first with how we do authentication right now. Usually, we have the browser and we have a server. And when the user logs in, what we're doing is we're doing a post to a certain URL and sending there the username and password. Then the server actually gets that. And what it does is it creates a session based on that user. And once that happens, it returns a cookie to the browser so that the browser can have it and keep the user logged in. Then the browser wants to do an authenticated request. For that, it sends the cookie to the server. Based on that cookie, the server searches uh, for the session that is uh, used by that cookie and then authenticates the user. And once that happens, we are sending the response to the client. So this is not very good because we're using a session and session and stateful. So what we propose is a better approach based on tokens, which is called JSON Web Token. It is actually a standard by the IETF. So let's see what is a JSON Web Token. Basically, this is a JSON Web Token. In the left, we see the token, which is similar to a regular one. But in the right, we see that it actually has information inside because this, this token in the left is actually assigned JSON. So let's see what we can do. For example, if we go to the payload and we change something and we start typing, you will see that the token keeps on changing. So let's see here. I'm changing now the email. And now, as I change it, you will see that the token on the left keeps on changing. And that's because the payload is changing. Then besides that, there are three parts in the JWT. The first part, the green part, is the header. In the header, we are specifying that we are creating a JSON web token. And also, in this case, we are saying which algorithm is going to be used for signing the token. In this case, it's HMAC 256. Once we have that part, we have the blue part, which is the payload, which is where we can put any JSON information that we want. In there, we can put, for example, a name. We can put an expiration. And we can put anything that we want the server to get once the user logs in. Then, finally, what we have is the last part, which is the signature. In the signature, the basic, the basic idea of, of, of the signature is that using a secret, a particular secret, you can actually sign that request, sign that, that JSON, sorry, and then send that JSON to the client. So that when, so that, when that token is sent, is sent back to the server, we can be sure that this token was created by that same server. Let's see how it works with a JSON web token then. Now we have a browser. The browser asks for an authenticated request to the server. Again, it sends the username and the password. Then the server will create a JSON web token with the user information, and it will return that token to the user. And then the browser has to save that token in local storage, for example, and send it back on the authorization request for everything that we want to do. Then the server will check that that token was created with a secret that, from that server. And if it is, it will get all the user information from the token and then return it back to the user. That way, what we are sure here is that we have all the information and it's not saved in the session. It's actually stateless because everything is held in the token. So thank you. <laughs>